Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for being here, here this morning. Uh, and in particular, I want to recognize our local law enforcement partners who are here, the Memphis Police Department, Shelby, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, and the Collierville Police Department. We appreciate your presence here very much. Uh, and I also have with me the Colonel of the Highway Patrol, Tracy Trott, the Director of the Governor's Highway Safety Office, Kendall Poole. You'll be hearing from them in a few minutes. I think as most of you know, as of January 1st, uh, there will be an increase in our seatbelt fines in Tennessee. For first offense, it will be going from $10 to $25. For second and subsequent offenses, it will be going from $20 to $50. Uh, this is a result of legislation passed by the General Assembly uh, during the, the last session uh, at, the, uh, at the administration's request. Uh, we think uh, this will be a very important tool in the toolbox uh, in our efforts to enforce the seatbelt law in our state. Uh, so far this year, we have lost over 300 lives in Tennessee on our roadways uh, due to the failure of individuals to wear their seatbelts. Uh, that's 300 too many. Uh, during this holiday, holiday season in particular, uh, but also throughout the year, we hope that uh, citizens will make good choices uh, and wear their seat belts as they travel not only throughout our state, uh, but elsewhere as well. Uh, as you may know, um, during uh, this administration, Colonel Trott and I have really stressed the importance of data-driven uh, deployment of our state troopers. Um, for those of you who have been in Memphis for a while, you're probably familiar with that whole concept. It's very similar to the Blue Cross concept used uh, in the city of Memphis. Uh, simply making sure uh, law enforcement officials are in the right places at the right times to have the maximum impact. So that's what we've been doing with our state troopers across the state, making sure they're in the right places at the right times to have the maximum impact on traffic fatalities uh, and serious crashes through proactive enforcement of our seatbelt law, our DUI law, and so on. Um, so far this year, state trooper, troopers have issued over 107,000 seatbelt citations. But that in a little perspective, uh, that is a 255% increase over the same time period in 2010. So it reflects uh, uh, our data-driven approach and our proactive enforcement uh, of our seatbelt laws. Uh, we are going, going to continue to make this a priority in our state. Our traffic fatality rate, while it is going down, and we're very encouraged by that, is still above the national average. So we have a long way to go to get where we need to be. Um, we hope the day will come, we hope the day will come when it will be difficult for a state trooper or a local law enforcement officer to find a motorist who is not wearing a seatbelt. But we're not there yet. We have a long way to go to reach that point. So it is going to, to continue uh, to be one of our priorities. We hope that through our continued proactive enforcement, our data-driven deployment of our state troopers, and this increase in seatbelt fines together, will encourage our motorists to simply make the good choice of wearing that seatbelt. That is really our goal. Our goal is not uh, to simply go out and issue more seatbelt citations uh, and uh, increase the amount of fines that people pay. Our goal is to encourage motorists to wear their seatbelts. Um, during the Haslam administration, uh, while we have focused on this, we have seen our traffic fatalities going down. We are encouraged by that. But as I mentioned a minute ago, we, we have a long way to go to reach our goal of being uh, below the national average. I'm very proud of the Tennessee Highway Patrol uh, and their efforts under, under the direction of Colonel Trott. We have saved lives on our roadways. Our troopers are committed uh, to making sure that our citizens arrive to their destinations safely. So we encourage uh, all citizens to especially be safe during these holiday seasons when our interstates and other roadways are going to be very crowded. And of course, we wish all of our citizens uh, a very wonderful holiday season. With that, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Colonel Trott to make a few comments. Then we will hear from Kendall Poole, um, Director of the Governor's Highway Safety Office, then be glad to take any questions that you have. 
When Commissioner Gibbons and I came into office about the same time, back at the beginning of the administration, we identified the areas that we thought were killing people. It was easy to see that seat belts were not wearing a seat belt was a major cause of our fatality rate. At 2010, 54% of our fatalities were unrestrained. So we set about an aggressive campaign to enforce the seat belt law, to educate the public on the safeties and the necessity to wear a seat belt. And through that aggressive enforcement and educational campaigns, we have lowered the unrestrained fatality rate to 48% this year. That's a significant decrease and has saved many lives. There are a lot of people walking around in Tennessee today alive because of the efforts of law enforcement officers that stand behind me, especially the local law enforcement officers that work with us every day. Captain Deal from the Memphis District and his troopers that are stationed here in this area have done a fantastic job. The fatality numbers are significantly lower in this end of the state this year and a lot of it is because of the aggressive enforcement of the seatbelt law. The legislature has given us a new tool, a higher fine, and you might think that maybe a higher fine is not going to make much of a difference or maybe just the amount of the fine is not going to make much of a difference, but we didn't go about this process haphazardly. We studied other states who had enacted similar fine increases and we found that each one of them uh, each one of them had a significant increase in the usage rate of their seat belts and a decrease in their fatality rate. We hope that Tennessee will experience the same sort of results and if it does we will save even more lives than we have in the last four years. I want to thank Commissioner Gibbons for his support and it makes my job much easier to direct the Highway Patrol's activities when I have someone like him standing behind me. I want to thank all the local law enforcement people that have come here today to support us. We can't do this alone. We don't have enough people to do it alone and we need everybody's help. And I want to thank the media for coming out and spreading this word because public education is just as important as the enforcement aspect of this. Together we can all save lives. These things are personal to us. Every time someone dies on our highways, it's just not a number to us. It is personal. And we want everybody to be safe all year round, especially this time of the year when we celebrate all these wonderful holidays. So I want to thank you, and I'll turn it over to my good friend and partner, Kendall Poo from the Governor's Highway Safety Office. Thank you, Colonel. We're glad that you guys are here. As he said, it's uh, if you don't tell your story, nobody else is going to tell it for you, and you're here to help us tell it. And we're grateful to do that because Commissioner Gibbons, Colonel Trott and I all share the same passion. It's fun to be able to come to work with people who know they want to make a tangible difference in lives of Tennesseans every day. And I want to give a, a shout out as well to Brenda Jones. Brenda is our law enforcement liaison for the Governor's Highway Safety Office in West Tennessee. And Brenda does a terrific job with all of our partners in all counties west of the Tennessee River. So we, we greatly appreciate Brenda's contributions. Governor's Highway Safety Office, our mission is to reduce crashes and save lives in Tennessee. We do that in a variety of different ways, whether it's impaired driving, whether it's occupant protection, and seat belts, distracted driving, aggressive driving, all of those things where we, where we tailor our campaigns to meet those needs. In this case, we're talking about seat belt usage, and you heard Colonel Trott talk about the unbelted use coming down as far as our fatalities are concerned. We are commissioned to do a observational seatbelt survey in the Governor's Highway Safety Office every year. And it's across all 95 counties. In the year 2014, we were at 87.7% and that was our highest rate that we'd ever achieved in the state of Tennessee, still below the national average. But what we saw this year in 2015 was a one and a half percentage point dip that took us down to 86.2 percent. Now you may say, well, it only went down a percentage point and a half. That represents tens of thousands of Tennesseans who are not wearing their seat belts. This year, last year, year before, you can always look at it and see all of our fatalities, nearly half or just above half have been unbelted. Well, you heard me give the usage percentage. That means half of our fatalities are coming from 14% of our population. Think about it. So 
this seatbelt fine increase not to pad the county coffers, not to pad the city coffers. It's going back into the state general fund just like it always has. It's simply another tool in the toolbox, as Commissioner Gibbons said, to help us save lives in the state of Tennessee. A couple of areas of concern I want to talk about. First, pickup trucks. Pickup trucks experience an eight percentage point less use than a normal vehicle on the road. And if you take that down to rural areas, which have a less usage rate than the urban areas, then you have a recipe for disaster. So again, we're going to continue to focus on pickup trucks. We've got to have them. We've got to have them know that they have to buckle up. If it's not just to save themselves, save their family, save the emotion from a law enforcement officer who has to go knock on their door. The economic cost can be in the billions of dollars. If you look back at 2012, the economic loss from not wearing a seatbelt and a fatal crash that came in resulted in an estimated $10 billion across the U.S. In Tennessee alone, it, it, was, a, it was a significant percentage as well. Those costs include insurance costs, emergency costs, congestion costs, lost work time, and the list goes on and on and on and on. It's very important to us also the financial aspect in accordance with the human aspect as well. We need to continue to watch for vans. Vans also have a lower seatbelt usage percentage this year. And if you think about vans, you think, well, there possibly could be children in a van as well. And we're proud to say in the Governor's Highway Safety Office that we sponsor 90 fitting stations for child passenger safety across the state where we're training technicians, instructors, to make sure that our most vulnerable citizens are protected as well. If you look at gender, men are less likely to wear their seat belts than women. Women are about 88%, men around 84%. So again, we're using data-driven technology and numbers to make sure that we know where we need to improve ourselves. Seat, ba seat belts do save lives. Uh, if everyone had been wearing a seatbelt just last year in the United States, an additional 3,000 lives would have been saved. Now, as Commissioner Gibbons said, we are on pace to set a record, modern-day record, for low numbers of fatalities. If, if it hasn't been going too well for us the first couple of weeks here in December, but we are on pace for a low number of fatalities since 1962. Think about that, and we're proud of it. Think about how many cars were on the road in 1962 as compared to how many cars are on the road today. But we've still got work to do. One life is too many. Every statistic that we talk about means a life. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll be glad to take questions. I do want to add one thing that Kendall said. He said none of this fine money is going into the city or county coffers. None of this fine money is going to the highway patrol either. We don't, we don't benefit financially from this at all. All the fine money goes into the state's general fund. We'll be glad to take any questions. In, in this, uh, the study that you've done on why people don't wear seat belts, I mean, is it not break down pickup trucks, vans, and men are the worst. But right. it, is there a general reason that they give for not wearing it? Uh, Kendall, I'm going to let you answer that one. It is an interesting demographic, uh, and I guess, um, yeah, you I will. You know, when we look at it, and we've studied this over the years, uh, people who have been driving the same roads they've been driving their entire lives seem to feel very comfortable. They think nothing's going to happen to them, that it can't happen to me, I'm safe. Sometimes they say, uh, I'm driving a larger vehicle, I'm in a pickup truck. But they don't realize that that pickup truck is easier to roll over and if you're not wearing a seat belt, the chances are about 90% that you're going to be ejected. And when you're ejected, it usually means death. So, again, it's, it's a matter of comfort for some people. They say, well, I just don't want to wear a seat belt. It's not comfortable. You know, uh, uh, what if I get caught in, in a water or, or fire and I can't get out in, in a crash? And that's, that is less than one-tenth of, uh, of a, what, what is it, Amanda? One, one half of one percent. One half of one percent involve fire and water. So again, 
the odds are so much better in your favor to save to save your life. Hope, hopefully that answers your question. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, how does this impact passengers uh, compared to drivers? I mean, uh, would a driver be uh, fine? Additional money if the passenger is not buckled up? For the uh, front seat passengers, you know, they can be sighted separately if they're over 18 years old. So the, the fines would apply to them too, just like the, uh, the, the new fine schedule, the 25 for the first offense, the $50 for the second offense, that would apply to the passengers in the front seat. In the rear seat, if they're under 18, they can be, the driver would be cited for the violation. Thank you. I might add, this is a primary offense, so there, there does not have to be some other offense in order for there to be a seatbelt seat cit citation. We can issue citations even though there may not be any other uh, traffic offense involved. One thing that might be important to point out to the media as well is, is the primary seatbelt law in Tennessee was passed in 2004, and we have seen an incremental increase year after year in seatbelt usage since that time. However, at this point, we feel like we're capped out and we've got to do more to reach that high risk driving population. Other questions? Well, we appreciate very much you being here. Obviously, we have to rely on the media to get the word out about the seatbelt find increase. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, our goal is really to deter citizens from making that bad choice of not wearing a seatbelt. That's really the bottom line. So thank you very much for being here. It will be around for any individual interviews you might want to do afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you.